Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome to The Hive. In this technology overview video, we're going to take a look at the Node MCU microcontroller. We'll cover what it is and we'll make an LED blink on and off. And then we'll talk about some ways that you can use a Node MCU in your home. Before we get into that, I do want to say a massive thank you to all my subscribers. Right after I released my last video, my subscriber count clocked over 1000 subscribers. It's very humbling to think that there's over a thousand of you that want to hear what I have to say on a regular basis. So thank you so very, very much for being a part of the hive and helping get me over 1000 subscribers. I know I've got big plans for the channel and uh, every subscriber does help me get closer to achieving those goals. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So while I roll the intro animation, be sure to like the video, hit subscribe, and you should have time to hit the bell icon as well to get notifications when I release new videos. So let's get started. So what is a Node MCU? Well, when I talk about the Node MCU, I'm not talking about Iron Man, Thor and the Infinity Stones. The Node MCU is a low cost, open source, low power development board for the Internet of Things. This unit includes an ESP8266 module, and there's also modules available with an ESP32. Now, if you're not familiar with the ESP8266 modules, they're a tiny microcontroller. It's just this section here that includes a Wi-Fi module, and that's the antenna that you can see at the top here, which you can then use to connect your microcontroller project to your network, whether that's for internet connectivity or just simple remote control. Now, if you've watched my previous videos, you might recognize that the ESP8266 module on this Node MCU looks very similar to the two year modules from some of the smart gadgets that I've hacked in previous episodes. And that's because it is. Most two year modules are based on the ESP8266 microcontroller. So if we wanted to, we could flash this Node MCU with Tasmoda, connect some relays or other stuff to the pins and control them with Tasmoda and Home Assistant. There's a couple of particularly neat things about the Node MCU board, which makes it perfect for DIY projects. It includes a micro USB port with a USB to serial interface for programming the ESP8266. And it also includes these breakout pins for all the GPIO pins on the ESP8266 that's at the core of the board. Additionally, you can program custom firmware for the ESP8266 using the Arduino IDE. And we'll take a look at that now. Now, obviously you'll need the Arduino IDE, but you'll also need to install the board definitions into your Arduino IDE. And I'll put a link to the instructions for this in the video description below. The core here is that inside the Arduino IDE, we need to go to the Arduino menu and then preferences. And we need to add in this additional boards manager URL and once we've added in the additional boards URL, we can go to tools and we can go to board and we can go to boards manager. And then in here, we can search for ESP8266 and we can install the ESP8266 board manager. Now that we've installed the ESP8266 boards, if we go to the tools menu again and go to board, we've got the Arduino AVR boards as well as the ESP8266 boards and it's got the version number there. 
and we can see here that we can choose from generic ESP8266 boards, we've got Adafruit Feather boards, the Node MCU, so either the 0.9 or the 1.0, and you can normally identify those by either the 12 or the 12E. There's some SparkFun boards in here, Lowland Wemos D1 Minis, uh, and even an IT'd Sonoff, and I'll actually take a look at a Sonoff in a future video. Now I do need my board to be plugged in, so I will plug that in over here. And I'll go to the tools menu and import its selected TTY USB serial for me here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this Node MCU onto some breadboard. I've already prepared some LEDs on this breadboard as well, and we're going to make some LEDs flash. Okay, so now we're going to write a really simple sketch to make some LEDs flash. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to define LED1 as D1, and that's the pin that I'm connecting LED1 to on this board. And I'm going to also define LED2 D2. Okay, so we've defined those two variables. So now in our setup method, we're going to set pin mode and LED1 to output and a semicolon and pin mode LED2 to an output and a semicolon. So all this is doing is telling the Arduino code that these two pins, we want those to be output pins. So now we need to move down into the loop section. Now this section of the code is just going to run forever. So whatever we put here, it's going to keep running this after the setup until we either hit the reset button or we unplug the unit. So the first thing I'm going to do is digital write and open brackets LED1 and I'm going to pull that pin high. And that's just going to basically turn that pin on. At the same time, I'm going to digital write LED2 low. And that's going to put that pin to off or low. After we've done that, I'm going to introduce a delay of 500 milliseconds, so half a second. And then I'm going to do a digital write LED one low. So I'm going to turn that LED back off. And at the same time, a digital write LED two high. So I'm going to turn the other LED on. So what we should get here after I add a delay of another 500 milliseconds. So what we should see is the LED, so one LED turn on, waiting, waiting half a second, and then the other LED turning on while the, other, the first LED turns off. Now at the moment I have a sketch running on this ESP8266 that's just flashing the one LED, and that's uh, simply without the uh, additional lines here and I haven't defined the second LED. The wiring for this is very simple. We have D1 going into this resistor on this breadboard, which then goes out to the positive side of this LED, which on the other side, the negative side of the LED goes to ground or the G pin on the node MCU. The D2 pin, same thing into a resistor and then into the 
positive side of the LED, which is also connected to the same ground pin. The resistors are literally just there to do some current limiting so that we don't burn them out too quickly. So now that we have written our code, I'm going to verify the sketch and we'll save it. We'll call it that. That's fine. And I'm going to expand this here. We'll just double check our settings here. We're on the USB serial. We're in Node MCU. Perfect. And I'm going to upload the sketch. So it's going to compile and it'll take a few moments to upload this and we'll see the LED flashing on the actual ESP8266 here for a moment. And then in a moment, we should have the LEDs flashing opposing sides. Now this one's blue and this one's red. And there we go. Now, obviously that is a really basic sketch and it doesn't really fit into the idea of home automation. But something you need to bear in mind is that this is possibly the simplest thing that you can actually do with this unit. Something else we could do would be to set these pins as input pins and have a temperature or humidity sensor plugged in to here and then have that data being fed over the Wi-Fi using MQTT or any other protocol uh, to send that data into Home Assistant so that we're logging that data somewhere else. You could also attach relays to any number of these pins down the side here and use those relays to trigger things like the solenoids on an irrigation system or something along those lines. And I'll actually be using one of these modules in a future video in, to do just that, to trigger some solenoids on an irrigation system. Now, obviously that's a really basic overview of the Node MCU and its capabilities. You can attach all sorts of sensors like temperature and humidity sensors, lux sensors, hygrometers, air quality meters, relays, etc. to the Node MCU and then control them all using Home Assistant. Because the ESP8266 has Wi-Fi built in, we can connect it to the Wi-Fi and use something like MQTT from a library called PubSub to push data to or from Home Assistant. And if we do an Arduino deep dive, I'll be sure to cover libraries in a future video. Of course, if you don't like Arduino and the C++ code that it's based on, the ESP8266 module is also capable of running MicroPython code as well, but it is a little harder to set up. I am planning to get hold of a Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller in the future, and I will dig into MicroPython when I do a video on that Raspberry Pi Pico. In a couple of future videos, we're going to take a look at controlling some addressable LEDs with a Node MCU. A couple of videos because we'll look at two different ways to do it. So that's an overview of the Node MCU. There's so much that you can do with the Node MCU in the context of your smart home. And if you're looking to pick some up, I'll drop a link in the video description down below. I do hope that this has helped you in your smart home journey. Be sure to comment below with how you're planning to use your Node MCUs in your smart home. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the bell icon as well so you get alerts when I release new videos. Lastly, if you enjoy what I'm doing here and you want to help support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.